Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the John Gallo Arena in Bourne, Massachusetts, as we get you ready for this South Division III South Sectional Semifinal between the Hopkinton Hillers and Coyle Cassidy. The Hillers are the 11 seed with a 14-6 and two record overall. Coyle Cassidy is the 10th seed with a 14-6 and two record overall. Both teams have won a pair of playoff games to get to this semifinals matchup. The Hillers back on Thursday, February 28th, took down Bishop Stang four to nothing. This past Sunday, they defeated North Quincy three to nothing, both games right here at Gallo Arena. And Coyle Cassidy last Thursday defeated the seventh seeded Upper Cape Tech nine to nothing. And then second seeded Norwell this past Sunday, two to one to get to this point. And I always say that you never know what you're going to get in this South Division III sectional bracket. It is always made up of very strong teams. And right now, we'll send it down to ice level for the introductions and the national anthem. Between the South sectional final matchup between the Canal and the Warriors of the Royal Cassidy High School. coaches and contest officials have worked diligently to prepare for today's competition. Please show your appreciation by demonstrating good sportsmanship and respect for all in attendance. Ensure that your behaviors reflect the values that should be identified with these student athletes. Assume responsibility for your behavior and the behavior of those around you. If you require assistance, Please call upon an MIAA school or security official. Any verbal, written, or physical conduct related to race, gender, ethnicity, disability, sexual orientation, or religion shall not be tolerated. And good subject of violators to be rejected, and they result in penalties being assessed against your team. Now for tonight's lineup, the visitors from Hopkinton High School. Starting at number one, Cole Thomas. <laughs> On the next, number 15, Steve Sackles. <laughs> On the next, number 18, Ronnie Sheamus. <laughs> and left wing, number 12, Kyle Rogers. Starting at center, number 11, Sean Walsh. Starting at right wing, number 19, Tommy Hamlet. Now for tonight's home team, Coyle Cassidy High School. Starting at net, number 30, Brett Borges. On the fence, number 27, Brendan Flavin. Starting at left wing, number 13, Kyle Walker. Starting at right wing, number 9, Jacob Ward. And at center, number 4, Duncan Youngclaw. Our great nation has persevered through the leadership and sacrifices of the men and women who have served or are currently serving in our armed forces. We invite both veterans and current military personnel to stand. We thank you for your service to our country. Now I invite you all to stand for our national anthem. Oh, 
there you have it. The introduction of the starting lineups and the national anthem. And we are ready for the South Division III sectional semifinal game between the 11 seeded Hopkinton Hillers and the 10 seeded Coil Cassidy Warriors. John Ritz on camera, Tom Nappy on the call for what should be a great battle between two talented teams here at John Gallo Arena today. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for Coil Cassidy starting in net, Brett Borges. And on the I-7, Studley, Jacob Ward, Sean Galbato, Duncan Youngclaws, and Ben Tufts. For the Hopkinton Hillers in net, it is Cole Thomas, center, Sean Walsh, left wing, Kyle Rogers, right wing, Tommy Hamlet. On defense, Ron Sheamus and Steve Simos. And we are underway here at Gallo Arena. The winner of this game will move on to take on the winner of Ashland and Bourne. And here comes the Hillers, there's a goal! Sean Walsh, right off the bat. 11 seconds in. Well, the Hillers having a few days off coming into this game, but they seem ready to play today. one nothing Hopkinton. Sean Walsh in the face-off circle against Ben Tufts. Royal Cassidy out of Taunton. That's up the far side by Hamlet. Into the Warriors zone. Jammed up in the corner. Rogers trying to get there. And now with the puck, Sean Galbato. Now Rogers with a pass out. He was looking for Hamlet. Down the ice it goes. Ron Sheamus will track it down. 11 seconds in. Sean Walsh with a goal. Tommy Hamlet with the assist. Royal Cassidy trying to respond. Over to the near side it goes. Rogers bounces it off the sideboards. Here comes Hamlet. There's a shot just wide to the right. Along the far side, tracked down by Gilbert. Gilbert puts it off the boards. Now with possession, it's William Tripp. Tripp going to shoot it around the end boards. Over to the near side it goes. Here comes the Hillers quickly working up ice. Steve Simos trying to get the shot off there. Weinstock takes a hard hit into the boards. Jammed up in the corner now, Dan Kirk gets there. The back pass over to Gilbert. Gilbert got his skate on it, trying to keep it away from the incoming warrior, Jake DeMora. Luke Glyden tracks it down. Over to the near side it goes. Pass up over to Quinlan. Quinlan puts it off the near side boards. Trying to get around Jacob Ward. Pass over to the far side by Dan Kirk. Here comes Coyle Cassidy as the Hillers make a change. Oliveri with a shot deflected by Thomas. Pass over by Simos. Here comes the Hillers. Sean Walsh racing in. Walsh with a shot and it's wrapped up by Borges. Brett Borges, the goaltender for Coyle Cassidy in his senior year. Well, he got an early taste of Sean Walsh. 11 seconds in, Walsh on a break with a beauty of a goal. 12.57 left to go in the first period. The Hillers with the early 1-0 lead. Sean Walsh up against Ben Tufts in the face-off circle. Walsh wins the faceoff. That shot deflected off the stick of Rogers. Pass around the boards by Flavin. Will Cassie trying to establish control. Here comes Tufts. Ben Tufts with the pass over to the near side, deflected out of play off the stick of Simos. We will have a faceoff in the neutral zone. Well, the winner of this game advances to take on the winner of Ashland and Bourne. That game taking place after us right here at Gallo Arena. And the sectional championship game will be Sunday, 4 p.m. right here at John Gallo Arena in Bourne. Walsh around the net, wraps it around to the far side. Hamlet trying to establish control. Back to the Warriors zone it goes, tracked down by the defenseman, Sean Galbato. Tracking it down in the Hiller zone, Sheamus. 
Sheamus goes up the far side of Hamlet. Hamlet contested, able to get it to Walsh. Now racing over is Rogers. Rogers with a bit of a break here, looking for a shot. There he comes, and it's deflected away by Galbato. Walsh does battle along the boards. And now here comes Coyle Cassidy. Hutchinson with control. There's a shot and a glove saved by Thomas. Well, I've been told John Hutchinson is who to look out for on Coyle Cassidy, the junior with some good skill for the Warriors. And he gets a good shot off there. Walsh up against Ben Tufts. And Thomas will wrap this one up as it was quickly approaching. And Thomas has to wrap it up again. Off the faceoff, Tufts was able to backhand it towards the net. Well, the South Division three bracket, certainly one of the toughest brackets there is in these playoffs. 21 teams qualified this year in the South Division three bracket. And that is the most competitive bracket in all of Division three and most other divisions. Oliveri puts it into the neutral zone. Ba knocked back up the ice by Quinlan. Here comes Oliveri. Pass across over, looking for Studley. Tracked down by Gilbert. Over to the near side, he goes towards Quinlan. Getting a stick on it, Oliveri. Pillars trying to get it out of their zone, up to Hamlet, just past his reach. Flavin will track it down for the Warriors. Flavin pops it off the boards. Up the near side it goes, uh, Arpin. Now back to the Coyle Cassidy near side corner, and around the end boards it goes. Flipped up the ice by Oliveri, and we'll have an icing here. Faceoff comes with 10.56 left in the first period. For those of you just joining us, it's Hillers 1, Coyle Cassidy nothing. Sean Walsh assisted by Tommy Hamblett on a goal 11 seconds into action. Walsh up against Hutchinson. And there's a shot by Hamblett, and that's turned away by William Tripp. Tripp with possession. Rogers closing in. Tripp takes it around the net. And now back out he comes. Good pass up ice to Young Claus, but it's quickly deflected away. Galbato. Sean Galbato puts it over to the far side. Here comes Jake Demora. Demora was contested by Quinlan. Up behind the Hillers net it goes, and now to the far side boards. And now a quick break here. Racing up, here is Hamlet, and there's another goal! Hamlet! is going to feed it to Rogers, and Rogers is going to put it in at 10.15 left to go in the first period. That was just a beauty of a pass by Hamlet, and what a great setup there. You had the two-on-one coming up ice, and the Hillers take advantage. The Hillers trying to reach the South Division III sectional finals for their first time ever. 2-0 Hopkinton. Here comes Jacob Ward. And we got a whistle here along the near side boards. Hopkinton goal scored by number 19, Tommy Hamlet. Assisted by number 12, Kyle Rogers. Time to goal 445 in the first period. That's Hamlet for the Rogers at 445. Weinstock. Gets the stick on it, wraps it around. Tracked down by Oliveri. Lots of action in favor of the Hillers to start off this game. 2 0 Hopkinton. Two beautiful goals. Drew Arpin coming up the far side for Coyle Cassidy. Well, the Warriors are going to have to respond here if they want any chance in this game. You can't let this Hillers team get too far ahead. Out in front, there's a shot turned away by Thomas. A good save there off the stick of Evan Studley. Wrapped around by Ben Tufts. Jammed up along the far side corner. Now over to the near side it goes. There's a shot turned away as Dan Kirk got right in front of the stick of Young Claus. Back to the neutral zone now. Tracked down by Tripp. William Tripp 
trying to find Hutchinson. White Sox got in the way, however. Will Cassidy having a hard time maintaining possession in the Hiller zone. Rogers closes in on Tripp. And now Coyle Cassidy on a bit of a break here. Backhander, and it was stopped by Jake DeMora off the stick of uh, Young Claws. DeMora unintentionally getting in the way of that. Here comes the Hillers. Walsh racing in, and he gets a shot off. And that puck's still loose. Borges should have wrapped it up. It looks like he tried, but just could not get the glove on it. Hamlet for Simos. Turned away by Borges, and that puck's still loose. Rogers got another shot off, and he was trying to hook it around towards Hamlet. And now there's another shot to the near side it comes. And that's knocked up the ice by Young Claws. Well, Brett Borges playing a dangerous game here, not getting the wrap on it, and letting the Hillers get off numerous shots. And we'll have the icing call and a face-off in the Warriors zone. 8.09 left to go in the first period. Can't ask for much better of a start than this for the Hopkinton Hillers. Sean Walsh up against Ben Tufts on the faceoff. Well, I'll tell you what, the Hillers, uh, towards the end of the regular season, they kind of cooled off a bit. But right at the beginning of this postseason, probably it started at the tournament down at Martha's Vineyard, they really just started to heat up, and they're getting white hot at the right time. Simos would pass up the far side, stolen away. There's a shot, and it's turned away by Thomas. That was off the stick of Studley. Here comes the Hillers on a break here. Hamlet looking for a shot. Glove save, Borges. Well, Brett Borges has been uh, pretty busy in net so far for Coyle Cassidy, the son of head coach Daryl Borges. Dan Kirk up against John Hutchinson. Pass by Oliveri, but there to intercept was Kirk, and Kirk still trying to establish possession, but it's ripped away by Oliveri. Now Saporoshitz tracking it down. He'll pop it off the boards. Kirk gets the stick on it after Weinstock takes a big hit. Over to the near side it comes. Kirk trying to dig it out. And Gilbert going to try to track it down before Hutchinson could get there. Gilbert and Hutchinson going at it. Gilbert wins that battle. Up the far side of Weinstock. Weinstock leaves it forward for Kirk. Now Quinlan over to Kirk. Kirk trying to cue up a shot and now jammed up along the corner. Quinlan up against Tripp. Tripp with possession. Racing up the ice. Leaves it behind for DeMora. DeMora takes a big time hit. The Hillers, they're playing tough, they're playing physical, and they are leaving everything they got on the ice tonight. They are ready for the postseason. Walsh racing in, turned away by Borges. Up the near side of Arpin. Arpin racing down, Simos with some contact. Leaves it out in front. And that puck deflected away. It'll roll all the way back to the Warriors zone, and that'll draw the icing. 6.05 left to go in the first period. The Hillers two, Coyle Cassidy nothing. It's the South Division Three sectional semifinals. The Hillers trying to get to the D3 South Finals for their first time, I believe, in team history. Thomas will wrap that one up. Well, Coyle Cassidy, they're doing pretty good on the faceoffs in the Hiller zone, getting the puck in front of the net. But Thomas, he's not going to hesitate to wrap it up. Walsh up against Tufts. And the net came dislodged. There's a shot, turned away by Thomas. Hard shot there off the stick of Flavin. The Hillers trying to work their way up ice. Glyden tracks it down. Glyden flips it off the glass. Up the near side and knocked back down by DeMora. Thomas comes out of the net and will place it. Hiller is working up the far side. 
Flip up the ice there by Weinstock. Tracked down by Oliveri. Now flipped way up by DeMora to back to the neutral zone. Gilbert was there to get the stick on it. Now Flavin along the far side. Weinstock trying to get there. Now racing up Oliveri. Oliveri is trying to leave it for Young Claws. Well, Coyle Cassidy establishing a little bit of momentum here, especially possession wise, but they're not getting many shots off. Jake Weinstock coming off the ice. He looks maybe a little shook up. Hopefully he's okay. It doesn't look like it's serious, however. He did take a couple of big hits so far in this game. Along the corner, Hutchinson bangs up with Hamlet. Out in front, and it was a nice job by Walsh trying to look for Rogers in front of the net, but there to intercept was Tufts. There's a shot, and that's just wide to the right. That was off the stick of, I believe, Sheamus. Number covered up a little bit there. Simos gets in there on Young Claws, but the puck got away from him. Pass over towards Hamlet along the far side boards. Hamlet up against Tripp. Back to Coyle Cassidy zone. Rogers trying to track it down. He'll do, take a hit from Galbato. And now Hamlet gets in there. Hamlet around the net trying to sneak it through. There's a shot turn away off the stick of Simos. Now another shot, and it's still out in front of the net. Borges with a couple of good saves there. And wide to the left goes Simos. Up behind the net it goes, Rogers, And that shot went off the face mask of Borges. He was trying to look for where, where it went. Hamlet leaves it out to the near side it comes. Arpin put it back to the Hiller's zone. And now a break here. Racing around the net is Studley. Nicely done by the Hillers. Quick to get back to their defensive zone and cover up. Coyle Cassidy certainly has some speed, but the Hillers, they're showing that they got a whole lot of speed too. And perhaps a little bit more. Hamblet puts it to the near side corner. Tracked down by Flavin. Up along the far side now. Here comes Saporoshitz trying to wrap it around. Saporoshitz looking for a shot there, a misfire. Young Claus gets to it. Young Claus trying to leave it behind for DeMora. Got away from him a little bit. And picking up the slack there, Oliveri. Oliveri racing up. He takes a hit from Saporoshitz. To the near side towards Quinlan. And now, good pass by Quinlan. Here comes Weinstock and a little misfire there. And now it's intercepted by Evan Studley for Coyle Cassidy. Studley up against Kirk along the near side. Back and forth we go. Over to the far side corner now as the Hillers make a change. Tracked down by Flavin. Over to Oliveri. 2.15 and counting left to go in the first period. The Hillers up two to nothing. And there's a shot. That is deflected off a defender. Gilbert bangs up along the corner. And a nice job there by Hamlet getting in the way of Arpin. And that's flipped up the ice by Dan Kirk, turned away by Galbato. Hamlet. Nice job by Hamlet, just getting the slightest touch on it to Rogers, but now it's intercepted by Tufts. And we're gonna get a whistle here. Perhaps we, we're gonna have an offsides call. So it will be a face-off in the neutral zone. 145 left to go in the period. First goal for the Hillers came with 14.49 left in the period. Second one coming with 10.15 left. Tommy Hamlet involved in both goals on an assist. Sean Walsh with the first one, Kyle Rogers with the second. Well, if you, if you uh, haven't played against Sean Walsh before, it's certainly uh, not the easiest thing to do. And Royal Cassidy, I think, after that first goal, realizes that they have to key in on Walsh and not let him get those easy breaks up the ice. We get a nicing call here. Face off comes with 134 left. Wrapping it around, Sheamus. 
Hamlin trying to race up the far side. Here he comes. And it's taken away as Youngclaw has got to stick in there. Demora, there's a shot, and that's wrapped up by Thomas. Another great save by the senior goalkeeper. I think he might have got that one caught right between the legs. Some quick reaction there. Walsh up against Tufts. Thomas has to turn it away off the faceoff once again. Tufts has done good on those faceoffs in the Hiller zone. Oliveri. Trying to get back to the Hiller zone. It was knocked down by Simos. Walsh with the pass over to the far side. Here comes Hamlet. Some good stick work there, but just too many Warriors around him. Jammed up along the far side now with Oliveri. Flavin, the backhanded pass over to the neutral zone. And now here comes Tufts. Tufts has a bit of a break here, and that one's flipped up and deflected off of Thomas. Simos with possession. Closing in on 30 seconds left in the first period. It's been action-packed so far in this game, as expected. And we're going to get a whistle here. Face-off will happen in the neutral zone on the offsides call. Clock stopped at 30 seconds left. Dan Kirk up against John Hutchinson. Here goes Kirk. He's tripped up a little bit. Regains his balance and takes a hit from Galbato, and we get a whistle. Do we have a tripping? Yes, we do, it appears. And it looks like the Hillers are going to be on the power play. And they indeed will. Sean Gelbato in the penalty box. The Hillers with the man advantage for the next two minutes. 22 seconds remaining in the first period. Gilbert, pass up to Walsh. Now across the ice, over to Simon, looking for a shot, and that's turned away by Borges. Hiller's trying to put the pressure on, take advantage of this power play situation up two to nothing. Gilbert up against Tufts along the far side. Here comes Simos. And that is going to do it for the first period. What a start by the Hopkinton Hillers. Sean Walsh 11 seconds in. And then just a few minutes later, Kyle Rogers, both goals assisted by Tommy Hamlet. Two nothing Hillers as we head to the second period. You are tuned in to the South. Division three sectional semifinals on HCAM. So what are the signs of an opioid overdose and how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal naloxone? Well, everybody should have it to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life. Welcome back to John Gallo Arena in Bourne, Massachusetts. A great crowd on hand today for this South Division III sectional semifinal matchup between 11-seeded Hopkinton and 10-seeded Coyle Cassidy. A lot of Hillers fans have come to support their hockey team. And right now the Hillers up two to nothing. 11 seconds in, Sean Walsh assisted by Tommy Hamblett knocks a goal in. Then at 10.15 left, Kyle Rogers assisted by Tommy Hamblett knocking a goal in to make it two nothing. Hillers a great start so far for Hopkinton as they try to advance to the South Division III sectional finals. Gilbert leaves it for Walsh. 127 left on the power play, so the Hillers do have the man advantage still 
as we begin this second period. There's a tripping call against Galbato for Coyle Cassidy. Up to the far side we go. And offsides. Oh no. What do we have here? Do we have a penalty? All right, no penalty. Face off in the Hiller's zone. Gilbert, it's a high stick call, I believe. Up to Rogers. Now here's Hamlet, leaving it across for Simos. Simos puts it around to Walsh. Back to Gilbert, flips it up to Walsh. Now Gilbert at the point. Over to the near side of Simos and out in front, turned away. That puck still loose out in front. And there's a shot by Simos. And that is uh, wrapped up by Borges. 40 seconds left on the power play. Did the net come dislodged? In any case, we do have a face off in the Warriors zone. Hiller is trying to take advantage of a power play opportunity. Simos. Along the blue line, puts it wide to the left. Behind the net, Hamlet trying to track it down. Rogers gets the stick on it. Back to the neutral zone now. Gilbert turns it around. Just past the reach of Walsh. Simos tracks it down. Simos leaves it for Gilbert, who will then leave it for Walsh. Gilbert. 10 seconds left on the power play. So it looks like it'll be successfully burned off by the Warriors. Simos, Gilbert, and that shot turned away by Borges. Simos up to Walsh. Walsh tripped up. Rogers with possession behind the net. Hamlet trying to get in there. Now along the near side is Gilbert meeting up with Peroni. Here comes Coyle Cassidy on a break up the ice with possession Trip. Trip takes a hit from Hamlet, but is able to leave it for his teammate Studley. Out in front, turned away by Thomas. Went off the stick of Demora. Hamlet trying to tr track it down along the near side, but Galbato is going to get there first. Galbato up against Kirk now along the far side. And the flip up there, and Cole Thomas will leave it for Glyden. Simos guarding the side of the net as Glyden puts it up the far side, just past the reach of Rogers. Flip up there by Demora. Simos tracks it down, then he'll take a hit from Arpin. Jammed up along the far side corner. Kirk trying to get the stick on it. Now getting in there is Quinlan. Quinlan up against Walker. Will Cassidy hoping for a shot here. That one turned away by Simos. Nice job getting the skate in front of it. Dan Kirk coming down the ice. He's up against Flynn. Up behind the net now. Quinlan gets the stick in there. Kirk leaves it out in front. White Sox with the shot. There's a goal. Three nothing Hillers. And that goal comes with 11.46 left. Jake Weinstock on the one timer. What a beauty of a shot. By Weinstock. Hiller's trying to pour it on early and often. Walsh nearly wins the face off there, but got tripped up. Along the far side, Glyden. Flips that one up. And now here comes Rogers. Wrong number five, says the PA announcer. Up behind the net. Hamlet puts it up the near side. Sean Walsh tracks it down. 
We're giving uh, credit on the assist to Dan Kirk. PA announcer was saying the names on the wrong roster for that last goal. Clock stopped at 11 minutes. We'll have a face-off after the offsides call. 3-0 Hillers. Things are looking better than good so far. It's actually going to be an icing call. Dan Kirk on the faceoff for the Hillers. There's a shot and another goal! Poured on! That was just the beauty of a wrister. I want to say it was Quinlan. It happened so fast. But I believe it was Quinlan. Comes with 10.57 left. <laughs> 4 nothing, Hillers. Everything going their way so far. Gamora puts it up the near side. Sheamus trying to turn it around. That's jammed up along the near side boards. And finally knocked loose so Studley could take a shot. Simos. Simos racing up the far side. Simos was in closing. Over the near side corner. Here comes Sheamus. Sheamus knocks that over to the far side. Oliveri tracks it down. Dan Kirk drops it. Kirk racing in, backhander, and it's wide to the right. Sheamus, and Sheamus puts that one off of Borges, and up behind the net it goes. Simos in the neutral zone. Puts it over to Hamblet. Hamblet looking for a shot. And Borges will wrap that one up. It was indeed Will Quinlan on that fourth goal. Just a beauty of a shot. It was an absolute smash by Quinlan on that fourth goal. 9.48 left to go in the second period. The Hillers fans getting their money's worth so far. Over to the near side it goes. Gilbert racing in. Around Gilbert is Arpin, and that shot is just wide to the left off the stick of Studley. Good set up by Arpin. Studley trying to set up Arpin, loose puck, and it's wrapped up by Thomas. And then a little uh, pushing after the fact. Well, if you're Coyle Cassidy, you're very frustrated right now. Charlie, four to nothing. 9.33 left in the second period, and everything going the Hillers' way. Cole Thomas has been sensational in net all postseason long for the Hillers. Walsh up against Tufts. Coming into today's game, Cole Thomas has 32 saves and has not given up a goal. And that one was off of Hamlet, and he took a hard shot. And that, it was William Tripp trying to get the shot on net, ended up going right into Hamlet. I think it might have knocked the wind out of him. Jammed up along the far side corner. Simo's trying to dig it out. Tripp is there, trying to leave it in the circle. Simon's trying to turn it around. Shot here. Tripp puts it wide to the left. Walsh puts that just past the reach of Wine Stock. Nine minutes in, County left to go in the second period, and we'll have an offsides here. Or icing, rather. And it looks like we have a penalty, perhaps. Let's see. All right, no penalty. There's official uh, having uh, some words with one of the Warriors players. Thought he might have did something after the fact. But Simos lost his stick, but Quinlan says, that's okay, I got it. Weinstock racing up. Weinstock along the corner. Briefly loses control, then gets tripped up. Coyle Cassidy has it. With possession, Hutchinson. Leaving that, trying to leave it out. In the middle was uh, Young Claus. 
deflected off of Simo. So now Quinlan pokes it up towards Weinstock. Weinstock along the corner, trying to wrap it around and get it towards Kirk. Back to the blue line now, Glyden, trying to leave it out in the middle. Back to the Hiller zone we go. And that is going to end up being an icing. Well, Hutchinson was trying to race up the ice to get there in time, but could not track it down. Well, the Hillers so far in the postseason, they have scored 11 unanswered goals. Jeff Toko has entered the game for his first time for the Hillers. Here comes Coyle Cassie, a two on one. And that is uh, deflected off of Saperoshitz. What a great defensive play there. And then uh, delivers a hard shot in the far side corner. And we're going to have a whistle here. I think we're going to have a penalty. They're going to get Saperoshitz, I think, for the extracurricular. They're going to get Saperoshitz with a grab, it looks like, on Studley. So Coyle Cassidy will have their first power play opportunity. Or are they? They're discussing it. He did just go to the bench. He didn't go to the penalty box. The officials in discussion. Are they going to fault both teams? I believe they might have sent a warrior to the penalty box. But they're talking things over. I think they might uh, fault both teams here, but if they do that, they should just leave it at even strength. Wow. Right now, it looks like two Warriors are going to be in the penalty box. Evan Studley and William Tripp. So the Hillers might have a five on three here. And it looks like that's the case. Well, Coyle Cassidy, they're frustrated. They're down 4 nothing, and they're losing their cool. The Hillers have a two-man advantage. 7.52 left to go in the second period. Well, this is the worst thing you could do if you're the Warriors. You give up another goal, this game's just about over. Over to Gilbert. Simos, back to Gilbert. There's a shot wide to the right. So two in the box for Coyle Cassidy, five on three right now. There's a shot out in front, and it's turned away. That was off the stick of Walsh. Hamlet leaves it for Walsh. Walsh trying to set it up. Back to Gilbert at the point, now Walsh. Goes across to Simos, and that is wrapped up by Borges. Coyle Cassidy going to switch things up. Ben Tuff, Sean Gelbato, and Jake Demora out there. Walsh up against Tufts. Gelbato with possession, wraps it around. Gilbert tracks it down. Gilbert to Simos, then feeds it back to Walsh. Now Gilbert, Walsh, out in front, trying to jam it in. Simos was trying to jam it through. Borges covers it up. We'll have another face-off in the Warriors zone. Over to Simos, he's going to take a shot here. And, and that, he's trying to put that through the five hole. He's trying to uh, get Borges a little confused there with a kind of a softer shot. Simos, out in front, trying to jam it in. Hamlet was in front of the net trying to jam it in, but 
Defender able to knock it away. 46 seconds left on both power plays. Or knocked, uh, left on both penalties, rather. But 46 seconds left on the two-man advantage. Now 37, Walsh. There's a shot and a goal! Sean Walsh puts that off the middle bar. And it's 5-0 Hillers. That goal comes with 6.25 left to go. An absolute beauty of a shot by the junior. And that takes one of the power plays off the board, but the Hillers still with a man advantage for the next 33 seconds. And that's the tough thing about uh, having two penalties simultaneously for Coyle Cassidy. Dan Kirk up against Ben Tufts. Well, things starting to come unraveled early for Coyle Cassidy. They find themselves down five to nothing. All Hillers so far in this one. On the far side, Saparoshitz got the stick on it. Quinlan now leaves it for Kirk. Here goes Kirk, racing up, and it's turned away. Hamlet, or Sheamus rather. To the far side it goes. Quinlan is trying to get it towards the corner. Now back to the left point to Saparoshitz, and that's deflected in the air by Borges. Around the net it goes. Here comes Coyle Cassidy. Studley was trying to make a move there. Deflected off of Kirk. Sheamus puts it up the boards. There's a shot and a glove save by Thomas. 5.27 left to go in the second period. 5-0 Hillers. Hillers take advantage of a two-man advantage. Well, the Hillers score a couple more unanswered goals. You're going to see that clock starting to run. Simos trying to get it out of the jam there. Glyden. And he'll take a hit into the far side corner by Young Claus. And what do we have here? Looks like we might have another penalty. Yes, we do. They're going to get Gavin Young Claus. So the Hillers on another power play. That'll be their third power play of the night. Just pure frustration by the Warriors of Coyle Cassidy. Well, the way Coyle Cassidy is becoming unraveled, it doesn't give you hope that anything's going to go their way tonight. High sticking was the call. Gilbert leaves it for Walsh. Walsh with a nice move there. Here he comes. The Hillers, they're going to try to pour it on here. Leaves it in the far side corner. Now Gilbert. Simos with a shot. That's just a little wide there. Gilbert pokes it off the boards. Hamlet jammed up in the corner. Walsh trying to get to the puck. Hamlet pops it off the boards. Now Rogers gets involved behind the net. Back to the neutral zone. Gilbert tracks it down. Simos, now Walsh. Walsh racing up. There's a shot, and it's deflected out of play. I think that went off uh, the stick of a defender. 55 seconds left on the power play, 414 left in the second period. Hiller's trying to pour it on here in the sectional semifinals. 
And what the Hillers have done in this postseason is just outstanding, unbelievable. Of course, in the sectional finals, you'll get either a very tough Ashland Clockers team or a very tough Bourne team. Sheamus with a shot, and that's turned away by Borges. Quinlan puts it over to the far side corner, now poked up to Saporoschitz. Saporoschitz with a shot, puck is loose, and Borges is able to somehow wrap it up. That was a nice job by Borges getting that left leg in front of the puck and not leaving the open gap along the corner of the net. 32 seconds left on the power play. Faceoff comes with 3.51 left in the second period. Hillers had two goals in the first period. They have added three more in this second period. Sean Walsh already with a pair of goals today, including one just 11 seconds into action. And he also had the last goal for the Hillers with 6.25 left. On what was maybe one of the hardest shots I've ever seen in a high school game. Saperoschitz with a shot, and that's deflected at a play off a defender. Thirteen seconds left on the power play. Well, if Coyle Cassidy keeps playing this frustrated and letting their frustration show, this night is just going to continue to get longer and longer for the Warriors. And certainly better and better for the Hillers. Up around the net, and Walsh trying to leave it for Hamlet. Turned around by Galbato. Over to the blue line. Biden. Simos. Simos with a back hitter out in front. Rogers trying to stuff it in. Hiller still with possession. Back to Simos. And that shot just a little bit wide as Walsh was waiting alongside the corner. Glyden along the far side boards. Leaves that in the slot and it's taken by Studley. Coyle Cassidy finally breaks into the Hiller zone. Studley with a shot wide to the left. Up along the corner, less than three minutes left to go in the second period. Well, I'll tell you what, even though the Hillers up 5-0, they're not a team that's going to take their foot off the gas pedal. Not at this point, when you're in the sectional semifinals, you keep that foot on the gas pedal until the final horn sounds. Sean Gilbato tripped up. Rogers is able to knock it away. Walsh has possession. Then we have some hard pushing going on. Some emotions are showing out there. And Hamlet took a couple of cheap shots, and maybe there was a punch or two thrown. And we definitely at least have one warrior heading to the penalty box. And I don't know if they're going to get Hamlet because uh, he is going to head to the penalty box, so Hamlet will take a seat as well. But the first punch was certainly thrown by a warrior. But we might have some majors here. But I think it's going to be uh, four on four hockey. And it looks like we do have a player ejected from the game. William Tripp is done for the evening. So he will head to the locker room and hit the showers. 2.28 left in the second period. Pure craziness here at Gallo Arena. And the Hillers fans are just loving it, watching their Hopkinton Hillers dominate Coyle Cassidy. A 5-0 lead. Sean Walsh, the first goal of the game, 11 seconds in. Then at 10.15 left in the first period, Kyle Rogers assisted by Tommy Hamlet. Third period, 11.46 left, Jake Weinstock assisted by Dan Kirk. 10.57 left, Will Quinlan with a beauty of a shot. And then at 6.25, Sean Walsh with his second goal of the night. And the officials continuing to talk about the penalty situation. We've already had one Coyle Cassidy Warrior ejected. That was William Tripp. And I think uh, they're questioning who else is going to go to the box here. And 
They have certainly uh, taken a long time to discuss many of the penalties tonight. And I think at some point you just got to say, all right, let's get this game rolling. Long stoppage here in the second period. Well, looks like they're talking to maybe some kind of MIAA uh, executive over there. I believe it is going to be five on four since a Coyle Cassidy Warrior was ejected. But Tommy Hamlet is going to sit for a while. So we have a two minute penalty on the scoreboard. They got Sean Galbato in the box for two minutes for Coyle Cassidy. And I think the Hillers are going to be able to keep five out since there was a Warrior ejected. So it will be a man advantage for the Hillers. Despite the fact that you got Tommy Hamblett in the box. And Hamblett was just responding to a punch thrown by William Tripp who was ejected. And I don't even think Hamlet threw a punch himself. I think he just uh, kind of pushed him away. Well, it's because uh, this Hillers team, just so well coached by Chris McPherson, so well disciplined, and they've been taught, don't throw a punch in any situation whatsoever. Because whoever throws the punch, they're gonna be the ones that are heavily disciplined. So a man advantage for the next two minutes for the Hillers. There's a shot by Gilbert and a goal! Pour it on, six nothing. I want to say it was Quinlan. It was certainly an assist by Gilbert. That goal comes with 222 left. The Hillers, they're now just making it absolutely sting for Coyle Cassidy. Walsh gonna race up. Walsh with a shot there, turned away. Here comes Coyle Cassidy. Up the air side, Demora. Rogers. Less than two minutes left to go in this crazy second period. Simos puts that one out of play. That almost hit somebody coming out of the Coyle Cassidy locker room. One forty-nine left to go. Six nothing Hillers. We're still in the second period, believe it or not. Dan Kirk up against Evan Studley. Here comes Quinlan, looking for a hat trick. Puts that wide to the right. Weinstock up behind the net. Handled by Flynn. Back down along the near side by Galbato. Racing up is Studley. He's turned away by Saperoshitz out in front. And it was a nice box out there by Luke Lydon, not letting Evan Studley into that lower slot area. Back to the blue line, and that was off the body of Kirk, or Glyden. Luke Glyden taking one for the team. Kirk pops that up to Weinstock. Weinstock might have a break here, but getting in the way of that was Flynn. And we'll have an offsides. Clock stopped at 56 seconds left to go in the second period. The Hillers have added four goals in the second. And they lead it six to nothing. 
absolutely unreal. I feel like as the playoffs go on, the Hillers just continue to get better and better. Can't wait to see what the sectional finals will bring. And we'll do our research, but I believe it'll be the first time ever for the Hillers in the South Division Three sectional finals. Here comes Simos. Simos racing up along the near side. Leaves it over Walsh, and that's turned away by Borges. Less than 30 seconds left to go in the period now. Sheamus, shot there wide to the left. Picked up by Gilbert. Now along the corner, Simos. That shot turned away off a warrior. Along the near side, Demora. Intercepted by Simos. Simos racing up, there's a shot, and it's wrapped up by Borges. Brett Borges uh, has been very busy today, and it looks like Kyle Rogers might be a little shooken up. He went back to the bench. I don't know if he took one. He was grabbing his wrist area, it looked like. I don't know if he took the puck off the wrist or what happened there, but hopefully he's okay. He has been so valuable all season long and throughout the playoffs. Six seconds left to go in the period. Up along the boards. And that is how the second period will end. What a performance by the Hopkinton Hillers. They net four goals, and they are absolutely tearing apart the Warriors of Coyle Cassidy. They lead it six to nothing as we head in to the final 15 minutes of regulation. You are tuned in to Hopkinton Hillers Boys Varsity Playoff Hockey on HCAM. Are you worried about letting your child take the wheel? Maybe you should also be worried about what you're doing behind the wheel. Have you ever sent a quick text just this once? Well, that might turn into a catastrophic accident. Monkey see what monkey do. If you do it, why wouldn't your child? In a child's brain, almost all things their parents do, they can do too. 78% of teen driver surveys text and drive. 59% said their parents do it too. Stop texting and driving because if you do it, your child will too. And welcome back to John Gallo Arena in Bourne, Massachusetts. Tom Nappy on the call for Hiller's Playoff Hockey. John Ritz on camera. And we are ready for the third period. And the Hopkinton Hillers, well, they're just having themselves a great night as they lead Coyle Cassidy 6 to nothing. Four goals added in the second period. Take you through all the goals in the game. 11 seconds into action, Sean Walsh nets one assisted by Tommy Hamlet. 10-15 left to go in the first. Kyle Rogers nets one assisted by Tommy Hamlet. Then at 11.46 left in the second, Jake Weinstock assisted by Dan Kirk. 10.57 left, Will Quinlan nets a beauty. 6.25 left, Sean Walsh nets one. And at 2.22 left, Will Quinlan scores his second goal of the night, assisted by Gilbert. And it was a beauty of a pass by Andrew Gilbert to Quinlan. And he made it 6 to nothing. as we'll redo the face-off. And a violation. Walsh up against Studley. Well, Coyle Cassidy, they really let their frustration show in the second period. William Tripp was ejected from the game for throwing a punch. And the Hillers, they had uh, three power play opportunities in that second period. More than likely, if you're Coyle Cassidy, unless you can do some serious scoring, you ain't coming away with this one. But at least go out in class. Don't let your emotions show. Don't have stupid penalties. You're in the postseason, act like it. We'll have a face off in the Hiller's zone, 17 seconds into the third. And we do have a Hiller's penalty as Steve Simos heads to the box. So Coyle Cassidy will have their first advantage of the game. And it looks like uh, the goaltender is going to head over to the Warriors bench. I don't know if he was shooken up or if they're gonna send a six man out there to try to take advantage of the power play. He left his glove and stick on the ice, so I'm assuming he is just, uh, this was an equipment issue. And it looks like he's just adjusting the leg pad, so Coyle Cassidy had to take a timeout there. So Coyle Cassidy will have a chance to break the shutout. 
as they have the man advantage for the next two minutes. With possession, Galbato. Galbato at the point, puts it over to the near side. Galbato on the one timer, a misfire there. Arpin chasing it down. Up around the net, Sheamus gets to it. Sheamus pokes it off the boards. Back to the neutral zone, and here comes Rogers racing up the ice. There's a shot, and he was trying to leave it for Walsh, but Walsh could not get the shot off. It was a wide open left side of the net, but Walsh just had a little misfire there. Gelbato, and there's a shot by Gelbato turned away by Thomas. 1.16 left to go on the power play. A minute into the third, and a helmet came off of a Warrior. Ben Tuff's helmet fell off, so I believe that draws the automatic stoppage. And he's going to have to head to the bench, it looks like, since the helmet came off. And we'll have a face-off a minute and six seconds into the third in the neutral zone. Quail Cassie currently has too many on the ice, so they're going to have to get some players off. And we're underway. Oliveri, pass up over to Demora. Demora was trying to leave that across for Young Claus. Back to the Coyle Cassidy zone it goes. Well, Brett Borges has had a tough night in net for Coyle Cassidy, but he's still in the game, hanging tough. And he has had to face some absolute Lead, deadly shots from the Hillers tonight. The shots for Hopkinton have just been tremendous. They are taking advantage of every opportunity they possibly can. Saparosh, it's up the far side. Demora, pass over, nearly intercepted there by Walsh. And there's a shot wide to the right by Hutchinson. Well, I think you're going to see the Hillers switch up things a little bit in this third period. They got a very comfortable lead. They're going to get a number of different faces out on the ice. And I think they're going to try probably some different combinations as well out there. Jeff Toko is out there once again for the Hillers. Teaming up with the first line for a while. 16 seconds left on the power play. And that shot is going to be put aside by Borges off the stick of Gilbert. Here comes Coyle Cassidy on a break, Studley. And a nice job by Glyden. Studley was on a break, Glyden caught up to him and said, no you don't. Along the far side now. Racing up is Weinstock and Simos. I'll tell you what though, with uh, the way Coyle Cassidy has been in this game, throwing a couple cheap shots. These Hiller stars, they want to stay out there and pour it on and make Coyle Cassidy feel it. And here comes Arpin. The next step for the Hillers, more than likely, will be the sectional finals against the winner of the next game that will take place right here tonight, Ashland and Bourne. Could be an all-TVL sectional finals. If Ashland's able to pull out the victory, Certainly wish the best of luck to the crosstown rival Clockers. It would be great to see a TVL sectional final. Jammed up along the far side as Oliveri was trying to dig it out. Now Studley. That's put aside by Thomas. Hillers and Ashland split the series this season. Hillers took the first game on their home ice, and then Ashland took the second game later on in the season on their home ice. Along the near side, turned away by Thomas, off the stick of Flynn. Rogers trying to track it down. Rogers up against Oliveri. Oliveri able to skate away from him, wraps it around the corner.
Warriors trying to work it up the ice. They're looking for a break here. We'll have a face off in the Warriors zone after the icing. 11 minutes left to go in the third period. Killers had two goals in the first period, four goals in the second. They are comfortably ahead, six to nothing. Toko is trying to leave it for Rogers. Wrapped around the near side by Flynn. Glyden. Glyden with a shot just wide of the right. Studley is going to race up the ice. Sean Walsh trying to get in there and intercept. There's a shot wrapped up by Thomas off the stick of Tufts. Well, Cole Thomas has been absolutely tremendous in the postseason. 32 saves in the first couple of games and a whole lot of saves today. I'd say it's got to be approaching the 20s. As Coyle Cassidy has certainly uh, gotten more shots off, I think, than the other two opponents the Hillers had as we're going to have an icing here. Back to the Hiller zone we go. Now I'm not sure if the running clock rule is uh, a thing in the postseason, but typically if the if one of the teams go up by seven goals or more, the clock will not stop. That could just be a during the season rule. Killer is up 6-0 right now. And they're looking for more. But Coyle Cassidy looking to break the shutout. That one put out of play as it was deflected off a defender off the sick award. Well, the Hillers will be playing in the sectional finals Sunday, March 10th, 4 p.m., right here at John Gallo Arena in Bourne. And it'll be against the winner of Ashland and Bourne. Well, Bourne would certainly have the uh, home ice advantage if they're able to pull off the victory against Ashland. Dan Kirk trying to leave it behind for Simos. Quinlan will wrap it around. Along the near side corner. With possession, Galbato. It's knocked up the ice by Flavin. Over to the neutral zone, Weinstock. And knock it into the slot, and Ford just puts it aside for Flavin. And we'll have a whistle here, I believe off sides. Clock stopped at 9.28 left to go in the third period. We'll have a face off in the Hiller zone. All up against Hutchinson. There's a shot turned away by Thomas off the stick of Hutchinson. And we'll certainly have the sectional finals available on HCAM. And hopefully the states, if they're able to get to that point. I believe it is going to be the first time for the Hillers hockey program reaching the sectional finals. I'm almost, I'm about 90% sure of that, but we'll, uh, I'll certainly uh, do a little research to be 100% sure. And I don't think the Hillers hockey program has ever gotten to the sectional finals. And in the, this South Division Three bracket, it is a very difficult task to get to the sectional finals. Walsh up against Young Claws. That'll be Studley. I don't think these Hillers starters want to come off the ice. They're having a good time out there. They want to keep playing, get ready for Sunday. Walsh crossed to Gilbert. There's a shot turned away. Quinlan pokes it off the end boards. Gilbert over to Simos. Simos to Walsh. Over to Gilbert. There's a slap shot. And it's put in by Rogers. Kyle Rogers 
Off the deflection. Makes it 7-0. 8.53 left to go in the third. And Kyle Rogers has his second goal of the evening. Assisted by Andrew Gilbert. I'll tell you what, the Hillers uh, certainly padding up the postseason stats today, that's for sure. And we'll have a faceoff at center ice. Delbato along the near side. And that's put out of play. Well, in this South Division III bracket, you just never know who's going to beat who. I almost say that seeding doesn't really matter. Because more than likely, you'll be playing right here at Gallo Arena in Bourne. And especially this season, all the teams in this bracket, just about equal. All very good teams. And the Hiller is showing that they can compete with the absolute best of them. Will Cassidy works it into the Hiller's zone. Walsh tracks it down. Up to Toko. Toko takes a hard hit from Gelbato, and that'll draw a whistle. I think we have a cross check. I think Gelbato is heading to the box for the cross check. And he is. Hillers will have the man advantage for the next two minutes. And as far as the clock stoppage rule, the clock did stop, so that rule does not apply in the postseason. So it's really just going to be more torture for, for Coyle Cassidy. And that's covered up by Borges. I think Coyle Cassidy, they have some talented hockey players, but they really uh, let their emotions show tonight, which is just a big no-no, especially in the postseason. No matter how much you're down, you got to keep your cool. Quinlan puts it around. I thought the Hillers handled themselves very well. Coyle Cassidy was trying to bait them many times to throw a punch or do something to draw up a penalty, but the Hillers didn't fall for it. Glove save there by Borges off the stick of Rogers. Tommy Hamlet and Saparoshitz will enter the game. And Sean Walsh, he's still out there. He doesn't want to come off the ice. I think he wants to win this game 10 to nothing. Hamlet over to Saparoshitz. There's a shot a little bit high there. Saparoshitz again. Shot turned away by Borges. Rogers takes a hit by Oliveri. Well, I'll tell you what, I know uh, these Hillers starters don't want to come off the ice, but at some point, you're up 7 0. You've got a sectional finals game on Sunday. You've got to certainly uh, maybe consider protecting some of these guys. Walsh racing in. That shot goes to the near side corner. We're certainly keeping an eye on our cameraman, John Ritz, after what happened the last game we covered here at Gallo Arena. We almost uh, lost one of the best cameramen in the business. There's a shot out in front. Trying to jam it in is Rogers, and it's wrapped up by Borges. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I never thought I'd see a sectional semifinal in this bracket that resulted in a... 7-0 type of win. Obviously, we still have seven minutes left to go, but unbelievable. The Hillers, they came to, they came to play in this postseason. And I think after the early exit last year, where they lost in a uh, very good second round game, they want some revenge. They want to get to the next point. Actually, it was uh, after two wins, they lost in that quarterfinals matchup. Went two and one in the postseason last year. As that is turned away, along the far side it goes. Reese Griffiths is out there for the Hillers. Here comes Weinstock. 
Weinstock racing around. Now you're going to see a little bit of everybody get into the game for the Hillers. And the, and the best thing for these young guys, they're going to get some good playing time in a sectional semifinal. That's always valuable stuff to get that experience. Weinstock, Toko gets in there. And this entire Hillers roster, I mean, they're worthy of making an appearance in this game. Walsh, who refuses to come off the ice, racing up the far side. Up against Gelbato. Now Demora. See, Coyle Cassidy, they're keeping their starters out there as well, so I think that is encouraging the Hillers starters to say, hey, they're going to keep their starters out. They're going to play physical. They're going to push us around. Well, we want to stay out there, score some more goals. Clock stopped at 5.42. And we'll have a face off in the Hiller zone. We have a five minute major and it's against the Hillers. It looks like they got Quinlan. And I think what it was is Quinlan uh, might have hit somebody in the face mask with his stick. It didn't look intentional, but certainly uh, raised that stick a little high in that situation. So five minute major, the Hillers will get to practice their power play skills on the defensive side. 5.20 left to go in this third period. A seven nothing lead for the Hillers. Two goals in the first, four more in the second. And one here in the third as Cole Thomas turns that shot attempt away. Jammed up along the near side corner, and there's a shot covered up by Thomas off the stick of Tufts. Clock stopped at 5.01. Well, there has been a lot of stoppages in this game. It's been a pretty long hockey game. Hour 40 minutes so far. There was some big stoppages in the second period to discuss penalty situations, official stoppages. But this was a game that uh, could have got out of hand, but the officials did a pretty good job keeping the players in check. There were some uh, lengthy penalty talks at times, but overall this is a game that could have very easily got very much out of hand especially with how frustrated Coyle Cassidy was playing in that second period. Rogers with a nice move there. That shot turned away by Borges. Rogers tripped up a little bit. He looks like he's in pain. And he's grabbing at his hand, it looks like. Certainly hope he's okay. 4.23 left to go. We'll have a face off in the Warriors zone. And he's gonna try to get up and come off the ice. He's likely done for the night. Kyle Rogers was tremendous today. He had a uh, beauty of a goal in the first period. And of course, he added uh, a goal in this third period. Two goals for Kyle Rogers tonight. Four twenty-three left to go. Face-off coming in the neutral zone. 341 left on the Five minute major against Will Quinlan. Coil Cassidy, right now they're just, they seem unmotivated. They seem like, uh, you know, they've given up on this game. They're ready to uh, lick their wounds and go home. There's a shot turned away by Thomas off the stick of Arpin. Four minutes left in the period. Tufts with possession, some good stick work there. Seamus closing in behind the net. Along the far side, Galbato. Well, you know, hats off to this Coyle Cassidy team. Getting to this point in this bracket, not easy to do. And things certainly aren't going to come out your way today, but a lot of uh, talent coming back for that team next year. And they've been very competitive in this bracket for a long time. They are pulling their goalie now, and I think their mission is to just break the shutout, get a little pride. 
with possession Arpin. There's a shot wide to the right. So you got a six on four situation. Still 229 left on the major penalty and we'll have a whistle here. 307 left in the game. The goalie will come back in for the faceoff. So the Hiller is still improved to 15, six and two overall after this game is through. And we do have another Hiller's penalty. They get Sheamus with a two minute minor. So it's gonna end up being a six on three in the Hiller's zone. Nice job getting it up the ice there. Less than three minutes left to go. Here's Matt Flynn. Off of Hutchinson. That's knocked back up by Simos. Well, the Hiller's mission here, just keep the puck in the Coyle Cassidy zone. Don't let him get into your territory. This is what you would call a prevent. Oliveri, Hiller's fans letting Coyle Cassidy have it. Saying goodbye, seniors. Gotta love a little chanting. The Hillers fans, they do it in a very classy manner. Here comes Arpin. Simos with some contact there. Approaching two minutes left in the third period. Jammed up along the corner. Gilbert trying to squirt it out. So two-man advantage for Coyle Cassidy. And the Hillers, they're not letting them, or they're doing all they can not to let Coyle Cassidy pull their goaltender and to hang on to the shutout. And if they are able to hang on to the shutout, it'll be their third postseason shutout in a row. Out in front, handled by Simos. Galvado looking for a shot opportunity. Puts it back to Arpin. Arpin at the point. Now over to the far side. Will Cassidy looking to set something up here. Out in front, and it's going to be turned away. I don't know how Cole Thomas turned that one away, but Evan Sully was waiting right on the wide open side of the net. And Thomas with another save being put to the test here in this final minute or so. Along the near side corner, Tufts takes some contact. Knocked back into the Warriors zone. 43 seconds left hand counting and both power plays are off the board. We're at even strength. Arpin racing up. Saparosha trying to turn it away. The Hillers fans staying till the end of what is going to be a glorious, glorious victory for this Hillers hockey team. Hopkinton going to move on to the sectional finals to take on Ashland or Bourne. Just a tremendous dominant playoff victory here tonight. And the official having some words with uh, one of the Hillers players. And we have another Hillers penalty. I want to say they had too many players out there. Turned away by Thomas. Approaching 20 seconds left. Can the Hillers hang on to the shutout? It would be their third playoff shutout in a row. And it looks like we might have a delayed penalty here. Gliding with a hard shoulder on Studley. Well, Coyle Cassidy was throwing cheap shots all game long, so Hiller's giving it back to him a little bit, I'd say. Clyden heading to the box. And it looks like a cross check might have been the call. They also have a Warrior heading to the box, too. A couple Warriors, it looks like, so things got a little out of hand there. A 
And we'll see who has the advantage here. Looks like Coyle Cassie's gonna have the man advantage. But there's only seven seconds left, so. So we got five on four. Reese Griffiths with possession. He'll hang on to it, and that'll do it. The Hopkinton Ellers moving on to the sectional finals. They take down Coyle Cassidy seven to nothing. Their third consecutive playoff shutout. They beat six seeded Bishop Stang four to nothing. Third seeded North Quincy three to nothing. And now 10th seeded Coyle Cassidy seven to nothing. 14 unanswered goals for the Hopkinton Hillers, and they advance to the sectional finals Sunday, March 10th, 4 p.m. right here at Gallo Arena against the winner of Ashland and Bourne. What a tremendous victory for the Hillers, and just an astonishing playoff win by this Hopkinton team. They are just tremendous. Well, that is going to wrap up coverage of this South Division III sectional semifinal matchup. The final score for the final time, the Hopkinton Hillers take down Coyle Cassidy by a final score of seven to nothing. For John Ritz on camera, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching Hopkinton Hillers Boys Varsity Hockey on HCAM. We'll see you in the sectional finals.